The word of our God that we spend some time together looking at this morning is that gospel reading from Luke chapter 12. If you wish, you'll find that printed on the bottom of the right-hand page in the bulletin if you wish to have those verses in front of you during the sermon today. Would you say that there are more than enough divisions in the world today? Republicans and Democrats can't seem to find enough ways to attack each other. It seems more and more people feel divided from others on the basis of the color of their skin or the level of their income. And then there are personal conflicts that divide people because they simply really don't like each other, maybe don't even want to talk to each other. It seems the divisions are increasing as time goes by. And so we might wonder, why would Jesus say, as he does in today's gospel, do you think I have come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you. But division. Jesus tells us that he and his word will sometimes result in divisions among people. Those words of Jesus shock us, almost take our breath away. Why would Jesus say that? Does Jesus really bring division? It's important for us to understand what Jesus means by peace and division. Obviously, Jesus did come to bring peace. The angels of Christmas proclaimed glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. And think of the number of times that Jesus was speaking to his disciples or to others and, and, and says these words to us too when he says, peace be with you. Jesus truly did come to bring peace between human beings and God. Now, only Jesus can provide this peace. You and I cannot achieve peace with God on our own because of our sins. We have not measured up to God's perfect requirements. And if we would ever think that we are okay with God, that we can have peace with God because we try to be pretty decent people or we go to church pretty often or we're at least better than some are, well, then we're tragically mistaken. We hear Jesus set the bar so high when he says, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And to anyone who is not perfect, which includes us all, we hear the Bible say, your iniquities have separated you from your God. Apart from God, there is no peace. And these stern words of Jesus shatter our pride and take away our excuses they allow us no loopholes, as in, well, well, yes, God, but you have to understand. We heard in, in the earlier reading from Jeremiah, where God described the power of his word when he said, Is not my word like fire, like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? God's powerful word shows us how our own sins divide us from him and divide us from all that is good until Jesus puts himself in the middle of all of that strife and division. Jesus allowed our sin to divide him from the peace and the security and safety of heaven. He made himself that lowly servant, placing himself beneath God's holy will and obeying it perfectly. And even as he lived without sin, he did not always experience peace here on earth. As he proclaimed the truth, there were many who opposed them. As he proclaimed that he is the world's only savior and the only way to heaven, there were many who despised him and condemned him. That's what Jesus was talking about when he said, 
I have come to bring fire on earth. I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. He was speaking of the intense sufferings that he would have to endure as he did his saving work, as he allowed our sins to separate him even from his heavenly Father, as he suffered on the cross to the point of death. That was the fire and the hammer of God's judgment and justice coming down upon him as he put himself in our place. Now realize what that means for you. It means you have a Savior who loves you so much that he will allow nothing to stop him from paying for your sins. You are no longer separated from your God because your sins have been removed from you, farther from you than the east is from the west, God says. God has wrapped you in his mercy, making you his own child. He promises that there is nothing that will divide you from his love in Christ Jesus, your Lord. The sins of yesterday have been washed away in God's new every morning mercy. You are in a good place. The place of God's grace. The place of perfect peace with your God. But that place doesn't always feel so peaceful. That is, Jesus explains, because peace with God does not always result in peace with those around us. Now, sometimes it does. When others also believe in Jesus, you share with them a bond of joy and encouragement as fellow members of God's family. And when you have that blessing right in your own earthly family, it is indeed a special gift of God to be able to encourage one another and to love each other as God has loved you first. I've often heard couples who are growing in God's word together explain how they feel that God is bringing them even closer in their marriage, giving them a greater appreciation of their spouse and, and greater encouragement in their God-given roles in life. And then when there are times of challenge that we face together with those we love, when, when we're united in that peace in Christ, it gives extra strength, a gift to give thanks to God for. But as Jesus tells us, that doesn't always happen. He gives an example in today's reading when he says there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Now why are they divided? <coughs> Jesus is not talking about some family squabbles or personality differences. But he's describing the divisions that result when those who do not believe in Jesus react negatively towards those who do believe. But what exactly is it that causes the division? It's not something that God wants to happen, nor is it something that Christians want to happen either. But this happens because of the power of God's word. God's law in his word points out sin. And that makes people uncomfortable. If someone, for example, points out a sin of, of language that misuses God's name or, or, or a sexual joke that disrespects God's will for marriage, somebody might say, well, who made you the judge? Mind your own business. And that creates a division, doesn't it? Or as the Bible says that Jesus is the only Savior, some object saying, well, I'm a pretty decent person. I don't need that spiritual crutch of religion the way other people do. It creates 
a division. Or if one person in the family goes to church and others don't, somebody might say, well, why are you spending so much time away from the family every Sunday morning? It creates a division. There was even a time when a lady in a care center told me that other residents would make fun of her because she often had her Bible on her lap in her wheelchair. They'd say things to her like, oh, you think you're so holy? And then we know there are places in the world where if somebody becomes a Christian, their family really doesn't want to have anything to do with them anymore. And there are even places where Christians are violently attacked for their faith. These are all examples of these divisions that that Jesus is describing in today's reading. (coughs) Divisions that result because the darkness of sin attacks and opposes the light of God's truth and those who believe it. Those divisions are, are never easy. They were not easy for Jesus, and Jesus knows they are not easy for his followers either. Those uncomfortable times can bring temptations to to give up. Have you ever felt tempted to stay quiet about Jesus and his will because you didn't want to upset somebody? Ever felt tempted to to compromise a little bit on God's will just to keep the peace with those around you. That kind of peace really isn't peace at all. Compromise with sin never puts us in a safe place, never results in lasting peace. Jesus calls us to stand faithfully with him, close to him. Even if that results in dividing us from somebody else. So Jesus is teaching us that as his people we can expect that we are going to experience those kind of things from time to time. And, and when they do, it's not pleasant, it, it hurts. How can we find strength to not give up at a time like that? God's word shows us an answer. In that second reading from Hebrews chapter 12, we hear, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, fixing our eyes on Jesus. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Did you notice where to find the strength that you need to endure, no matter what the challenge of faith is? The Bible doesn't say, well, look deep inside yourself and find the strength there. We know we won't find it there. Instead, we are directed to to fix our eyes on Jesus, to keep looking in faith, seeing the one who lived and died and defeated death for us. And then we realize that anything that we endure for him is far less than what he endured for us. And when he allows those divisions or difficulties that cause suffering to come into our lives, we can trust that he has a good purpose, that that perhaps they can serve like a, a refining fire to purge away anything that would get in the way of the real peace that we have with him. So don't give up. Also for the sake of others, don't give up. When others cause divisions or oppose you because of your faith in Christ, remember who they are. They are people for whom Jesus also suffered and died. People who need to come to know the life-changing love of God. And so keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep your ears attentive to his words so that you will have the right words to say at the right time and in the right way in hopes that they will come to know Christ and the peace that he has earned for them also. 
These words of Jesus about divisions are certainly not easy ones. They're not pleasant ones to hear at all. Jesus speaks them to show us the reality of living as a child of God in a world where sin's power to divide is all too evident. And whenever you face division for your faith in Christ, pray that your words and your actions will display Jesus' peace. Above all, fix your eyes on Jesus. Cling to him in faith, confident that the strong arms of his mercy and grace will hold you securely so that nothing will divide you from your Savior and the peace that he alone can give. Amen. And I invite you to stay. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. For over 1,800 years, Christians throughout the world have used the words of the Apostles' Creed to declare their faith in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today we have the privilege to add our voice to theirs. In whom do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.